出国那个 slam 就有龙山戏嘛。五 General Secretary of All India Congress Committee Randeep Singh Surjewala， 我把很年个事，我来跟诺，把几多个把拉苏来，哈卡威，卡卡里，人家不给拉马勇，哈西龙，哈卡卡山特雷奈拉尔，给对，给来诺。Haba yakran bat umbukul sangma, haba day bat kenia kencing kento jong uniu nongelam jong kesen kongres. Nak leh ngu doktor mukul ulaong, bahaba kibriu kibana bar kipet yakini kidor kinsim ha kata kelenti. Susu ulah benarabru dah kabaong, kumno kibriu kibana bar kintip kidei mano. Hanrai kajing sisa kalong bat kibriu kibade ina bar jong kajela kinsim bet ha kata kador bah kini kibriu kibara lamayong kindei kileno. Nakaliang Dr. Mukul ulaong ba Orandip Singh Surjewala uklem keren tang nakabenta kei kebalajia hamik halaya anrei ula keren halor bun kimat kibayadei bat kijela jong ketahan cetei lamingi. Tungin ya sengap ya kei keba u Dr. Mukul un keren habaydei bat kani. See, you have to look at from how people perceive the people from outside how they have seen it after seeing the visuals how the perception has been generated. Obviously, there is a negative perception. Okay. Now, uh, therefore, how people are looking at our state of Meghalaya because of number of instances, whether it is the allegation of uh, illegal transportation of coal, allegation of, uh, you know, illegal mining. You have seen number of instances of uh, some accidents in the mines and all all those negative stories when they are generated how people from outside the state are looking at us how the people from the rest of the country and rest of the world are looking at us in this particular era where these visuals once circulated can reach any part of the world hmm? because of the aggressive uh, activity in the social media platform by the current generation. Therefore, it's the perception. It's the perception that has been generated because of the visuals. Now, how will anybody from outside know who are they? Even we don't know who are they. I don't know. I have been trying to find out who are they. But I'm sure the government will find out who are they. And that is the job of the government. But the fact is that anybody who have seen from outside will perceive that way. And so his narrative was not confined to Meghalaya, by the way. When he was briefing the press yesterday, he was talking about instances of all those which were not expected to happen in the northeastern region, including because the day before yesterday, I think there was an incident in, uh, yes, there was an incident in Assam Mizoram border. As a response to these repeated incidents of conflict between the two states, which involves the police, administrative mm -hmm. authorities of both the states within our own country. So those are the backdrop based on which he was narrating. Look what is happening. And why is it happening? In Meghalaya also there is a BJP backed government, NDA government. Yes, this government was installed by BJP. Mm -hmm. Let us be frank. Therefore, as an opposition, they were questioning the central government, the union government, the PM and home minister. Why is it that there is a, this is what is happening in Assam Mizoram border? Why is it that uh, what is happening in Nagaland? Why is it that what is happening in Assam? So the background of all this development that unfolded over the months recent months were clubbed together and he was also referring what has happened on the 15th of August, the Independence Day in Meghalaya. And obviously he is talking about the perception that they already have due to the visuals. And that's why we are always saying, let us be aware of how we want to be known for the rest of the world available in the visuals. Yeah, yeah, he was referring to what was available in the visuals and was available in other platform other than the news channel. That is what he was saying. So 
he was referring because if you look at the whole social media that is what he was referring to you know so uh, you have to look at from that angle that did it not generate that kind of perception outside the state you have to be clear on that also we have to be really concerned about what was the image that was painted because of what has happened as a follow-up to the, your 13th of August. This is a follow-up. The anger of the youth was demonstrated through that action. You cannot expect our youth to be so angry that they have to go up to that extent. Now for others who are seen from outside, they will not know actually who are they. They will not know. But what is important is that but then a perception is generated, a negative perception is generated. That is the reason why we must prevent any situation where youth can have frustration and anger. We must. And this is precisely the reason why we always wanted to engage uh, with the youth and create avenues of opportunity and talk about avenues of opportunities available for each one of our youth at least instill a sense of hope amongst themselves, give a ray of hope for them so that they have reasons to believe in themselves and their own potentialities and look at the opportunities and grab them and then be part of the whole story of growth and development. As a former chief minister, we've seen, uh, we've seen the Dorbashnam of Pullen, of Molai. What they've said is like these boys mm. who have hijacked that vehicle mm and have hijacked those weapons also. Mm. They should come forward and bring back those weapons. And they will not reveal their names. Do you think... See, I will tell you one thing. The job of the government, the government should not shrug away their responsibility. The government has a responsibility of dealing with this kind of situation. And they must do so, lest this becomes a precedence. Yes. Frustration and anger notwithstanding. Yes, we must also prevail upon our youth that our action should not go beyond certain limit. Because we must again understand there is a law. The law of the land has also to be respected and feared. If we don't respect and fear the law, then there will be lawlessness. And lawlessness is not good for anybody. It's not good for all those who are angry also. It's not. So therefore, respect for law, fear for law, to ensure that there is no lawlessness is very important. And how we ensure that, how we actually inculcate that sense of responsibility to regulate ourselves, to have that respect for law, Fear for law is our is the responsibility of the government. There must be a collective approach, therefore, to address these concerns. We have to also look at that's what there we have. That's why we have the whole separation of judiciary from executive, so that law is capable of ensuring the right kind of process of administration of justice to make the presence of law felt. In absence of that, what happens is that uh, there will be no reason for people to regulate themselves, no reason for people to regulate their behavior. So friends, what I'm trying to share with all of you is that we are in a situation which has predisposed the state to a very disastrous future. We must stop it. We must prevent it. And it is in our hands. It is not that it is not in our hands. Today, if I say that, okay, uh, somebody was asking me, in fact, um, about the existence of the government. Now, existence of the government is at the mercy of the regional parties. Now, the regional parties will have to decide whether they should continue to allow this 
dispensation to go on or not. That's why this new approach that I have adopted. We want to talk to them. We want to make them think and act. Whether we succeed or not, but then we will continue to do so. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.